Hey guys, what's going on? So, I'm sure by now, you have all heard that meat is going to give you cancer. <clears throat> that if you eat meat, it is going to beat you over the head into submission <clears throat> and uh, kill you, uh, kill your family, and uh, yeah, so anyways, so let's talk about this. The, the World Health Organization just put us down uh, classifying meat I believe in the same uh, category as cigarettes or processed meat and uh, they so they mentioned a, uh, for example an 18% increased increased risk of colon cancer so and of course all the the media has jumped all over this and so there's a few things we have to break down here statistics are very easy to sensationalize uh, when you look at them. Uh, you can make small differences between small numbers appear much greater than they really are. So that number 18%, that number 18% is a relative risk, okay? It's relative risk. So, for example, what we mean by that is that you have to compare it to something. It increases 18% compared to what? Okay, just eating? eating carbohydrate, what? So when you look at what it actually is talking about, what it's talking about, out of people who eat low amounts of meat versus people who eat high amounts of meat, you're talking about an absolute risk of colon cancer of 5.6% increasing to 6.6%. 1% increased risk. That's what it is. Okay, it's not an absolute 18% risk. Okay, and I'm going to talk about why all this stuff's correlation, and there's a lot more stuff going on than that. And that I would argue a lot of their, they still don't have mechanistic data to show any of this, it's all correlations. But let's go, let's go with what they have so far. So, a 1% absolute risk increase. Do you know what the relative risk increase from smoking is? 2,500%, 2,500%, and they put these two things in the same category. Completely inappropriate, completely asinine, okay? So, but let's look at it, like again. So, lo eating less meat versus eating more meat. You have to compare it to something. Compare it to what? Not eating? to eating carbohydrate, to eating fat. Did you know, and I'll provide a link to this study, that the actual process of eating anything at any time is associated with an increased, re an increased risk of colorectal cancer, of colon cancer. That just the simple act of eating increases cancer risk. So here's an idea, don't eat. I promise you will die faster than if you increase your slight risk of cancer. Now, we have to go, let's expand on the actual research they're using. Every single study that they are citing is a correlation study. Now, I don't want you to get the impression that I think correlation studies are useless. They're not, they're useful to pick out trends. But if you do not have then mechanistic data to support said trends, it is very, very tenuous to take anything that has a correlation and draw a, correct, a, a, a direct causal relationship. Okay? So, first off, they're using dietary recalls. They're saying, they're taking a group of people and saying, what do you eat? And another group of people saying, what do you eat? Those are extraordinarily unreliable. Again, I'm not saying dietary recalls shouldn't be used, but there are extreme amounts of limitations with dietary recalls, okay? People are, when they take people and they monitor what they eat, and then they have them do dietary recalls afterwards, they're <laughs> very far off many times. But let's assume, that, let's assume they're dead on, okay? That they're, they're getting this stuff dead on. Correlation is not causation, okay? First off, remember, we're talking about a one, not 18%, a 1%, 1% absolute increased risk of cancer, colon cancer specifically. 
There are so many confounding variables with this, such as people who eat meat are more likely to smoke. Okay, people who eat meat are less likely to exercise. People who eat meat are more likely to in to have higher calorie intake. All of those are unbelievable confounding variables that very, very, very easily could explain that one percent difference. Okay, people who eat meat are also less likely to eat enough fiber, okay? They're less likely to eat fruits and vegetables, okay? People who eat processed meat increase their intake of polyaromatic hydrocarbons. So when you cook something on the grill, you fry it, or you, if you char a piece of meat, the charred portions contain what's called polyaromatic hydrocarbons. So if you like blackened meat, there are things in there that have been shown to increase cancer risk. Very easy way to get around it, trim off the charred portions of meat. Okay, the reason I'm saying this, I'm telling this to you, is for you to understand that I'm not saying that meat actually isn't associated with cancer. Okay, what I'm saying is to draw a causal relationship is unbelievably irresponsible. And I, I, I think the World Health Organization must not have very many people who have had experience with advanced statistics. And really the only thing it says to me is that even scientists, even a lot of scientists, don't understand the basic concept that correlation does not equal causation, okay? Just the fact that meat eaters, people who eat meat tend to have many other unhealthy habits, okay? It is different, this is different than someone in the fitness industry saying, I'm gonna eat a higher protein diet, I'm going to eat enough fruits and vegetables, I'm gonna do all, that is way different than the person who eats hot dogs sitting on the couch, never going to train. You kidding me? That is very different. So. I want to leave you with this, okay? There's a website called Spur... Uh, actually, it's not called that, but if you Google spurious correlation, some of these will come up. I want to take you through some correlations that are much st more strongly associated with each other than meat and cancer, okay? Meat and cancer is a, is a very modest association. So, like, all these are over 90% associated. That is a, those are very strong correlations. So, one thing that's associated, U.S. spending on space, science, and technology, and suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. I mean, you can almost, I'm looking at the data, you can almost lay these lines on top of each other. Do you think that U.S. spending on space exploration is causing people to kill themselves by suffocation? Because I don't. Um, number of people who drowned by falling into a pool and the amount of films that Nicolas Cage has appeared in. Those are highly associated with each other. Do you think one causes the other? Per capita cheese consumption and number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. Yes, there's actually statistics on that. And again, these lines you can almost draw on top of each other. They're so closely associated. I can keep going. Divorce rates in Maine and per capita consumption of margarine. Age of Miss America and murders by steam, vapors, and hot objects. Total revenue generated by arcades and computer science doctorates awarded in the U.S. Worldwide commercial space launches and sociology doctorates awarded. Per capita consumption of mozzarella and civil engineering doctorates awarded. Okay? So, oh, here's a great one. People who died after falling out of a boat is correlated with marriage rates in Kentucky. So, again, <laughs> correlation studies have a place. But to take correlations and draw direct conclusions is absolutely irresponsible and asinine. And I'm quite frankly really, really disappointed in the World Health Organization. Uh, I'm not saying they shouldn't put information out there that says, hey, this is associated with this increased risk, this behavior, okay? But what they shouldn't do is classify it as a carcinogen when they have no uh, mechanistic data to support that, okay? You have to separate correlation from causation. 
it is a it is a basic fundamental of scientific research to understand this difference and the fact that apparently a lot of scientists don't even understand this difference is very concerning so I hope this uh, this video will help you guys understand a little bit better about what we're actually talking about what we're dealing with um, I personally am not concerned um, I continue to high protein diet high protein is core is associated with lower all-cause mortality okay so people eat more protein actually have lower all-cause mortality um, so and again that's just a correlation that means nothing in terms of causation okay but again the simple when you look at the research data you can see that just the simple act of eating increases your risk of cancer um, when you examine any scientific research you need to ask yourself what am I actually looking at and what does the data actually say it's very very dangerous just to listen to news sources to listen to different websites and say okay well they're giving it to me straight their job is to sell newspapers their job is to sell articles being over the top being sensationalist does that much better look at what the scientific data actually says okay guys hope this was helpful for you all i'll catch you next time